Hello, this is Corinne from Corinne's Crafts and hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all well. Today, my Technique Tuesday, I've sort of taken the Technique um, theme a bit loosely. I'm going to call it colour blocking. It's all about making a project, which I think is a really, really pretty project, but with one colourway. So I've just used blue. So I've just used two blue ink pads. I've used my Midnight Mist and my Waterfall. Okay, I've used a little bit of gold, but just, just to lift it. But it's mainly about using those two colour pads, um, ink pads. I've added a bit of texture with some glitter. There's a few gems on there and a little bit of ribbon. So it's very, very tactile. But I absolutely love this. I think this one is so, so pretty. So if you want to see how I made that, stay tuned and we'll have a look at how this is made. This card, I'm going to call it my Technique Tuesday all about colour blocking. But basically, what I want to show you is how you can make gorgeous cards just using one main colour. So for today's colour, it's going to be blue and we're going to be using a lot of our waterfall and our midnight mist. So these are duet duet ink pads um so they're they're um they're a chalk bait they're a hybrid one they look like chalky base when they fit when they when they dry um they are water reactive but they're lovely i'm also going to just bring in a little bit of an accent color in the gold but there's only going to be a hint of gold so i thought i would try different textures so we're going to have a little bit of um glitter paste in there as well but this one is really about textures now this is my main piece of card so it's four and Oh, I've forgotten what it was now. Four and three quarters by six and a half inches. There you go. And I've just used multi-purpose cardstock. I've not used watercolour because I'm not really going to be adding any water to this. And I wanted a nice white look. That's watercolour, you see. You get that sort of off-white. But I wanted that crisp white look. So I've got this multi-purpose. And then these are just three scraps, literally, that I hadn't yet cleared away. So I've got one piece I'm going to cut some flowers on. This one's going to turn into a tag. I've cut it to two and a half by four inches and we're just going to take the corners off when we're finished and make that into a tag. And then this one, I'm just going to use a slip of it to put my sentiment on. So how did I do that? Really, really simply. So let's bring in my base and i'm just going to put it onto a mat you might have a large stamp mat you might have a small stamp mat it's entirely up to you um and then we're going to use i'm going to use rocker blocks today i don't know if i've used rocker blocks on my tutorials so yeah i didn't use to like them was pretty scared of them um but now i absolutely love them now I don't want to scave. I've just literally been around my craft room and found stamps, dies, stencils, and I'm going to use a little bit of everything. Now, you know my my sort of mantra that how what I like is I like you to try and convert what I've made to fit what you've got in your craft room. So here is um like a crackle glaze stamp this is actually from one of my previous signature collections but i'm sure you've got backgrounds i just wanted something that was not too in your face now i'm not going to cover the whole thing i'm just going to cover some of it so i'm dabbing on my ink it's a pigment ink i don't actually need it as a pigment ink but it was i want the same gold to go all the way through so i'm going to pop that on to there so you can see i've not gone round to the edges and then i'm going to turn this round and I'm just going to pop it roughly in the middle. Now, there is no right, there is no wrong with this card. You cannot put the, make it wrong. So let's just pop that on to here. There's loads of elements to this, but we're just going to put them all together. And look at that. It's really, really sort of faint, but that's what I wanted. I just wanted that hint. If you want to add a little bit more, you can extend it. It's entirely up to you. So put, let's put that one away because I'm not going to use that again. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in, I think, a smaller one. And then I'm going in a minute to use one of Julie Hickey's large stamps. So I'm going to use this little, like, sparkle one. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to get my Midnight Mist. And I'm going to pop some Midnight Mist onto here. And then we can stamp it again once there. Then we can come down at the bottom. Again, random. If you can do random, well done. I find it quite hard, but we're going to have a go at random. And then a third one can come 
here. Okay, so three little bits of that. Then, ooh, what have I got next? Oh, I know, Lou's texture range. She's got some numbers. Let's use these numbers. So I'm gonna use the same ink pad. But what I'm, I'm going to do is, I'm gonna just use a little sticky pad. So I've got some sticky notes here. I shall use this one that I've already used a bit of. What I want to do is I want to stamp it roughly here, but I don't want it to go too far over. So I'm going to just pop. Don't worry about it being sort of a harsh line when it's finished because it's going to be covered. But I don't want the, the numbers to come out. So I'm going to just, let's go, let's go over here so that it can be seen. There we go. I don't want it to run off the page. There we are. There we go. And can you see, I've, It's uh, basically it's like creating a mask, isn't it? So let's do the same again with this onto here. So I've just gone over the top of the pigment ink. It's not going to cause any problems whatsoever. And I'm going to mask off there. And then I'm just going to come down. So underneath that one, um, let's go about there. So it's just, look, can you see, it just nestles into that, that star um, burst. There we go. There we are. Lovely. Coming on brilliantly. Then, now, these. Oh, where are they? Mm -hmm. Now I've lost them. What I wanted to use next. Here they are. Now, when I first set up my YouTube channel, I saw an advert on Facebook for from All and Create. Um, and they were offering for £25 a whole load of stamps and ephemera and bits and pieces. So I picked, I bought their bundle and this is one of the stamp sets that I've got in it. And I just love this um, like postage stamp. So again, just see what you've got, just use textures. But I'm going to, this time, we just use the waterfall. Let's have, um, that, we, that was the mi Midnight Mist. Let's have a go with the waterfall. And this is just so that I, it just adds a different colour. And again, if it doesn't print stamp perfectly, that's absolutely fine because we just want that, you know, that look. So I'm going to take that. Let's go. Let's go right up to. Oh, I'm going to have to go there now. Commit because it's touched. There we are. There we are. Look at that. So we've got a little bit of the light blue on there. And I think. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I know what I was going to do. I was going to add a little bit more. So I used this set a couple of weeks ago. It's a tattered lace set. Yes, it is. And I'm just going to use one of the fabric -y style ones. And I'm going to do a bit like... Oops, I'm dropping bits. I'm going to do a bit like I did before. And I'm just going to randomly tap. I don't want to cover it all. I just want random bits and don't mind if it's a bit more in some places than in others and I'm just going to go I should have done this before but I forgot over there so I just extended that gold that's all I wanted to do okay so let's take that one off and then the next thing I want to do so that it can be drying is I thought I'd do a little bit of stenciling so this is just from my flourishes swirls and flourishes i don't think i've ever used the little one before and i'm just going to pop it just up here let's find my glitter paste there it is hope you look after your glitter paste a bit better than i've looked after mine never mind i'm just going to find a little bit oops i need my cloth and i'm just going to just come in and can you see everything's sort of overlapping and i like that look so we've got put a little bit of glitter paste on here and don't worry you take a lot of it back off i'm going to bring that down there we go i'm going to bring that little bit up here you can control how much of a stencil you use can't you you don't have to use it all um, but you can just control which bits. There you go. You see, I even pull off most of the spare. Just like that. And then I'm going to come down this end. And I'm just going to go... I'm going to do it just... I think. I want it to sort of overlap bits, but not everything. 
but that's going to give the finished look that we want in the end. I'm going to use roughly the same bit, roughly the same bit, doesn't matter. And then come to there, come up to there, that'll do. And then take off what I don't use. This is quite a, the fine glitter. If you're using the chunky, you can't scrape it off in the same way because it, um, it drags it back out. But when you're using the finer glitter, it can. And I don't want too much on. I keep taking too much off there, look. Come on, that's better. There we go. Right, let's put that on there. I can clean all those in a minute. It won't take me long to finish this. And then I can get those all clean. And then I can lift that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's all about the background. We've talked about this so many times. And I'm going to pop that one down to dry. So let's just pop that up there to dry. So the next thing I want to do is I want to bring back my three pieces of card. So this is watercolour card. So I'm going to get bring in my flower that I was going to use. Remember I said that was from my Julie Hickey designs. And I'm going to use this lovely six petaled flower. So let's bring that in. And then we can pop some pigment ink over the top. So pigment ink, we talked about this before. Larger particles means it stays wet longer. Because it stays wet longer, that means that you can then apply your... Um, what can you apply? Embossing powder. You can apply a embossing powder to it. I'm just giving it a bit of a, a dust over with an anti-static bag. You can apply... Um, embossing powder and once you've uh, applied your embossing powder you can then heat emboss it today i can't talk and work i don't know what's going on today so you can see that's on there it's not strikingly in your face but it's enough so we can put the embossing powder over that and then turn that down there, there we go, you can see. It just looks a bit misty. And then onto this one, I'm going to grab, oh, I think I'll grab this brick. This is again from one of Lou's textures. I like this one. And I'm gonna pop that on there and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna use the gold. Now I don't mind putting it all over this because um, it'll, it'll work what I want to do. So this is gonna be my tag, remember? So I'm, I'm going to be cutting off a little bit at the top. So I'm going to bring this, just drop it down a little bit. So you can see there's a bigger gap at that end than that end, but that's deliberate. But otherwise it's fairly central. Put that over there. There we go. And again, if I get patchiness, that's perfect. That's just what I want because the whole point of this is I don't want, I don't want perfection. camera's getting very close to the uh, to the board I don't know whether my camera's slipping a bit I don't know it feels very close okay so well now I've got these two I'm going to heat set them okay so that's heat set that then we need to cut this out and there is a die that will cut this out. If you haven't got any that have dies, then you can just um, fussy cut one out. Um, it'll work brilliantly. Um, let's see if I can find where that fits. Find the right, oh, there it is. Find the right one. And then we can just put a little piece of tape on there. Now it's up to you whether you um, stamp and then die cut or die cut and then stamp. You do the one that works best for you. You will. It's trial and error. Um, when it's an open one like this, I tend to um, stamp first and then line it up and die cut. If it's a solid die, then I would um, do it the other way around. Right, I'm just going to move that and turn that one around there so I can trim this down so it's three inches. There we are. Now it will fit in my mini and then we can just quickly oh very close isn't it and then you'll see oh perfect 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 it's cut out just like that okay 
Right, just adjusting the camera because I think we were getting very close. Now, what I want to do now is, I'm going to try again. Let's get make sure there's no um, embossing powder on here. Get rid of that off there. I can feel it gritty because we don't want that because we're going to use our um, glass mat as our palette. Right, so I'm going to put midnight there and look at that. Isn't that gorgeously cloudy because it's got that chalky finish and then my waterfall on here so water mister a little bit of water and then all we're going to do right so what i've done is i've made sure it's heat set so that all the gritty bits have gone it's nice and smooth and we're just gonna tap into here let's tap into that bit and then we're gonna tap onto that so you can see at the moment i'm not covering it all far from it and I'm only doing one colour at a time. So you could only put one colour on your mat at a time if you wanted. But I'm just coming like this. There you go. So I'm mopping up as much of that ink as I can. Then I just want to give those a quick blast to dry them. Because I don't want any wet bits. Okay. So I've not dried it out completely because it doesn't need to, but I've just made sure there's no puddles. Then I'm going to come into the pale blue and I'm going to just pick up some more. And if you get, if you still got white areas, that's absolutely fine. It'll work. So you can pick up a bit more. Then oh, I'm going to pick up some bits, some light blue on there. And I love how I've got bits with different levels of water in so that you can get different effects. And then we can come in. Let's mop up all of the rest of this using this. The first time I did this, when I had a practice, I was doing them bits at a time and I didn't half waste a lot of ink. But once I knew what I needed and I could then put enough ink down. Let's go with the waterfall. I need a little bit more waterfall, I think. And you can see this is watery. That's quite thick. So that's going to give me shades, which is what I love now if you put too much on just blot it off um and that'll work as well there we go we're getting there now cooking on gas there we are right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wipe up that give it another quick blast what i think i might do is reactivate a bit of this and this is what I love, is when you dilute these colours, you can almost see how they're made because all the different colour components sort of separate. So I could see quite a lot of pink in this. There must be a lot of pink in this um, blue, um, which I think is really good fun to see. Um, and then we can just add on a little bit. So we're getting different shades. So I'm calling this colour block because what I'm doing is I'm just using shades of blue. Um, just to create a lovely, lovely project. So let's make sure all of these are dry because we can't go any further till they are. So you'll notice I turn them over. I always dry from the back as well. So let's have a look. So my flower is nearly finished. I can bring in my mat and this works really well because it's had water in, the watercolour card is quite soft. So I can actually shape really, really well. So we can put this one on there. Just drag that down. Just keep dragging. I'm sort of dragging down into the middle and then put it on there. And I love that. OK, so that's that one. With this one, this is going to be my tag. So I've just got the brickwork. So all I would do is I'll turn it over and I will measure one and a half centimeters down from that side any it the, the what you measure doesn't matter just make sure they're the same on each side one and a half from there and then one centimeter from into there and again like i say it really doesn't matter what your measurement is just make sure it's consistent so this is if you've not got a tag die or something like that so i'm going to cut from there to there nice straight line and there to their nice straight line so now look at that tag so all i need to do is bring in my cropper dial or a circle punch or if you've not got one of those just your pokey tool will do the trick pokey tool on a on a uh, craft mat so i can just work out roughly where i want it there we go in there 
and I'll need that again in a minute. The other thing I want to do is I want to stamp a sentiment on here because this is going to be my sentiment. And I'm going to take that and then I'm just going to stamp with love. Let's put it that way around so I can see what I'm doing. Put that on there. And I'm just going to stamp it with quick dry ink. My cardstock's nice and dry so I can then stamp it. Actually, I've got another piece. I've got another piece, like you can see, I just made earlier. I'm going to stamp it onto here because this is drier. And then what I would do is stamp it into there. There we go. And then all you need to do with that is trim it down. So I could trim it. It's going that way. So I'm going to trim it to there. And then I would trim it like that. If you need to trim it down... I'm going to give you a tip in a minute that's really good if you do cut it by hand and you feel it's not totally straight and then I'm just going to the one I'm going to use you'll see I've um what have I done I've done it a bit quicker I'm going to, this is just to show you and then a hole there we go so that's my sentiment and then all I want to do then is I'm going to get a gold um, metallic paint pen and I'm just going to go round the edges just like this just to bring in that gold now if you've got any nicks you've got any imperfections this hides it if you wanted to another if you haven't got gold just go around it with a black um, pen looks lovely if you haven't got like a metallic one like this you could just do a faux um faux stitch border around the edge that would look nice too i just felt it needed something to edge it and then right there and it also just joins everything together because if you remember there's that little bit of gold on my project and then everything you know just there's a reason for the colors then isn't there that's what i like to see a reason for colors now, i'm whizzing through this obviously you can pause rewind and go back if i've gone a little bit quick over anything that's what i love about these videos um it gives you a chance to do that so i've gone through there and then the last little bit i need to do is put some um, ribbon on and I've got some here with ribbon on there we go you can see with the ribbon on so we can now bring our card back now that one I just did wasn't perfectly dry so here's one I actually made just about an hour ago and that's nice and dry so let's clear everything out of the way so it's not distracting let's move all of these bits out of the way so we can just see what we're doing so these are the bits we've made we've made the background we've made the tag we've made a sentiment tag and oops if i can pick it up we've made a flower so i have got a card base and i took an eight by eight card and i just trimmed it down because you know me i like a tent fold and onto there i'm going to put some white um that's not white that's blue linen card let's put that on to there i'm going to use my collal so that's going to go on to here there just like that so i've got about a quarter of an inch um all the way around as my border so put that to one side for a minute then i'm going to get this now this is one eighth of an inch bigger so if this was if i remember rightly yeah four and three quarters by six so this has got an extra eighth of an inch so it's like four and seven eighths by six and an eight now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop that yeah i'm going to put this one I'm thinking as I go, I'm thinking as I go, what do I want to do? I'm going to put my collal on the back of there. And this is another reason why I wanted to do this with multi-purpose card, because I like the white to be the same. I've done this before where I've used multi um, watercolour for the top and then just my multi-purpose for the next layer. And it doesn't look quite right because the there's a colour difference. I'm just flattening out my glue. I'm going to actually turn it over and do it because it's catching then on my glitter paste so this is my stamp burnishing tool but it just allows me to burnish that and if it's moved i can still adjust it then i'm gonna get i know i'm just gonna get my two mil foam tape and i'm gonna pop some on the back so it's not about a lot of height it's just about adding that little bit of um dimension because this otherwise is a reasonably flat card 
So we can pop that onto there. I'll do two strips. You notice I'm doing them up and down the card because I find that gives me the most strength. Folk it all to the rescue. I love that. Okay, so I struggle with my with my nails to do this, but my pokey tool does it brilliantly. If you need to, you can always just add, some people have like a prick stick just for this, but I just use whatever glue I've just been using, just as long as some glue, just to pop it on there. It just means I've got a bit of time to move stuff around. Now you notice I've not put my decoration on the front because I wanted room to be able to, you know, press things down and I didn't want it to get in the way. Now, that's looking absolutely gorgeous in its own right, isn't it? But we can go better. So let's bring in this tag. If you want to put a little bit, what I've done before now is with this, is just get oh, like your tacky glue or your PVA. Just put a little oh, blob of glue in there. And then when it dries, it means that that won't come off. So let's find a foam pad. use those ones okay so let's put a couple of foam pads behind here one oops, two don't want too many and i'm gonna pop that yeah just like that i think let's come just there i'm not doing it perfectly straight now if you put it straight it's got to be 100 percent straight if you put it in an angle and deliberately, it look, I think it looks a lot better because if you're not straight, it really doesn't matter. And then the next one I'm going to do, can I use... What I might do is get a piece of this and double it up. So it's double thickness. I can put that at this end. And then I can put 3D glue on there and on there. Because 3D glue levels itself out. And then I can put that on right up. So I'm just using that foam pad right up to that foam pad. So what it'll do is it'll lift. And I can see I've got a little bit of height difference. Then I'm going to get my flower. And I'm going to bring that just... Yeah, I think just like that. So let's pop that on there. go and can you see how all of that background i know it was sort of broken up and done before but it all now works so well now just remember everything can come off the edges the top but you can't have anything coming off the bottom i know i say it all the time but it's just something to remember and then i'm just going to get a gem this is out of a craft uh, crafters companion craft box pop that on there just in the blue now if you wanted to you could speckle it with white you could speckle it with blue ink whatever you wanted but that is my my take on sort of color block so it's all about crafting with one color to create some beautiful beautiful I'll tell you what i want to do and i've not done it let me just trim these they're a little bit long I wanted to put them on before I did that's better oh yes that just changes that completely doesn't it much better much more control actually saying about that it's not quite finished is it let's go me and my gems they're my go-to it used to be a bow and now it's gems isn't it oh there we go let's go one I'm not going to do many where do I want this one there right that's it that's all i'm going to put on three three little gems yeah i like that actually i want to move that one i'm going to put it there a bit more random there we go i like that i hope you like that now if you liked that i will put down at the bottom down here in the description um links to anything that i can definitely the julie hickey stamps which you can get from craft stash um you should be able to find inks if you have some tim holtz distress inks you'll be able to create those looks too um but please please just go into your crafty 
stash and find what you have got i've used scraps of card to make the tags i've just used stamps um and, and dies that i already had i've not got anything bought anything specific to make this isn't that gorgeous please don't forget to um subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my content but until next time thank you for joining me on this technique tuesday happy crafting everybody and i look forward to speaking to you again soon bye for now